Welcome to the Fantasy Football Profit Podcast, hosted by Craig Phillips and Jeff Torrey. Visit us at FantasyFootballProfit.com. And now your hosts, Craig and Jeff. Welcome everyone to the Fantasy Football Profit Podcast. I'm Craig Phillips, joined as always by Jeff Torrey. And today we start to wrap up the 2017 season with our award show, which... I don't think we hit on any of these players in the preseason, Jeff, for the awards. Our MVPs were you picked David Johnson, I picked Le'Veon Bell. So that didn't happen because we're not picking them today, even though Bell did play the whole season. He's not the MVP. So we're going to go through all of our awards. We have, what, five categories, I think, this year that we ended up, some random ones, five, something like that. Some good, some bad, you know, talk about who we think. We haven't gone over the list between each other, so it's going to be interesting to see if we, I think we at least have one that's the same, probably. But we'll see how that goes. So let's just get into it. I'm going to skip all the intros. MVP. Let's get right into the big award to start off the show. My MVP, I'll just start off. Todd Gurley. Yeah, I agree. It can't be anybody, I think, but Todd Gurley. And it it helps the fact that he was majority of drafts. He was was either at very end of the first round or beginning of the second round type player. And I think more often he was in the second than he was the first. So easily... The MVP for me. I mean, there's not even a debate. Like, Bell was great. He was very good all year, but he wasn't quite as good as Gurley, and he was drafted at the beginning, so. Yeah, I mean, he you know, he was like 60 points behind Gurley, and that and yeah. that he was number two. Yeah. So it just showed how dominant Gurley was all year. Just, yeah, ridiculously good. I don't think any of these awards that people have on any podcast, whatever, everyone's picking Gurley. Like, you can't, you cannot. So actually, and there's really not much more to say. Gurley's just so good. So, I'm actually going to skip to the next award, which I'm going to skip over where I had him in order. So, this is going to be my most valuable late-round pick. Because this is the other way you can look at most valuable players. I mean, sometimes it's if they draft them late and how good they were, you know, or just overall best. Yeah, This year was easy with Gurley. So, this one, though, most valuable late-round pick. Is this one, this one was an easy one for me as well. I Alvin Kamara. Yeah, okay. okay. So I, I, we both have the you know, same two. Alvin Kamara for this one too, because he's, I mean, definitely a late round pick and was amazing. It was the fourth, the the fourth year. overall running back, and I, I wish I had it here with me, but he went very, very late. Obviously, at the beginning of the year, he was third on the depth chart running back, and now he <laughs> scored two hundred and thirty nine points for the season with, in standard scoring, and not even getting his start early on. Like that's the thing. Like he was. It was what? After the bye, really, where he came on, which was after week five for the Saints. I mean, he had pretty good games in week three and four, but that was off very little volume. Weeks one and two, he really didn't do much. So yeah, and after that, he's just ridiculous. Just to show how dominant he really was when he got to touch the ball, there was only three people, three running backs, I should say, that outscored him. It was Gurley and Bell. We could have, you know, guessed that. Cream Hunt was the third. And he only outscored him by less than three points yep. for the entire season. <laughs> and we all know what Kareem Hunt did in those first, say, five games when Kamara was still third on the depth chart. I mean, that is that is crazy how much he caught up to him. To, I mean, to get a player, though, like a running back that has fewer carry, like actually had fewer carries than Kamara, and the next player on the list is Christian McCaffrey, way down there. He had 117 carries to Kamara's 120. Everybody... Had more carries. And then to really to get down to the next guy is Duke Johnson way down there that had less carries than Kamara. Like he had so few carries. Can I just can't imagine next year if he his carries pick up. That's the thing though. You looked at his numbers at Tennessee, he never had a lot of volume. I don't know if that's a thing. Like, is that I but I didn't see any signs that he can't do it. No, I mean he looked he looked incredible, but you, you know, you do wonder. You know, does the bulk always lead to more production? No. And I, I think he might be a special player that you can have him be, you know, a uh, a split back, you know, split it with Ingram, and it actually might help him because you'll keep him healthy yeah. compared to someone like a Hunt who absolutely needs 20 carries in order to be good in a game. Yeah. And this year, Hunt would have probably been my next choice for this award, depending on when you <laughs> drafted, too. It really depended on for Hunt when you drafted. Because if you drafted earlier in August, he was by far, he's going to be a very valuable pick. I mean, by the time most drafts happened, he was already known that he was getting where was out, so he became much more valuable there. But still, he was he's probably the second option here. Maybe yeah, I, right I think about there. I think very easily the second option. Yeah, but those two by far were the best ones. I mean, it's 
pretty clear awards this year, just at least for those guys. Kamara's great, and that's going to be interesting going forward. Like start talking about next year about Kamara and Ingram. That's going to be the interesting conundrum. What do we do? How do you rank them? What do you think for next year? It's just, I don't even know. I haven't even. I think both will be in a top ten running back position. It's I don't see be... how you would do anything else if the situation does not change. Kamara could actually end up being a steal because I think he's going to drop down from this. He's not going to be fourth. I don't think. I really don't think he's going to be the fourth running back taken next year. So he no, will be because no. there's Gurley, Bell, Johnson, um, Zeke for sure, Hunt. Could probably go ahead of him, I think. Yeah. And, I mean, he's going to go down further well, than he should. Well, you know you're going to get the the opposition is going to say he doesn't get as many carries as the other these other guys. That, you know, and he probably, he could drop below Fournette or Melvin Gordon. You know, these he guys does, are guaranteed kind of I think Belkos. he's going to be, wherever you get him, I think he's going to be great value next year. So, yeah, that's going to be interesting. How are these, there's so many running backs next year. It's stacked. I really think this is going to be a great year. It might be the first time where running backs are kind of heavy, where you don't have to run off and grab one right away. You might be able to get away with if you miss that, if you get that top end wide receiver, especially if you're closer. I mean, mid first round, you can get a good running back second round. You can yeah. go get a good one. It, just... Yeah, it might be the first year where I don't go running back, running back. Was there any wide receivers at all for this award? I mean,. Adam Thielen could have been. He's an interesting one. He, yeah, he wasn't yeah. quite good enough, though. He was good, but he had 91 catches, 1,200 yards, almost 1,300 yards, but only four touchdowns. Yeah, I mean, so. actually, uh, I, I, I got to throw um, Robbie Anderson's hat in the True. ring. He was uh, throw, until McCown's injury. Yeah, he was. I mean, he was in no man's land either. Yeah. Like, there's no one that really was hot on him. No one really drafted him high at all. So uh, that was a big one. Um, yeah, I mean, there's some guys, but, you know, no one as – prolific as the the running backs that came up all right how about we go least valuable this is one that i'm interested what's going to be the pick there's there's i have some options here i actually listed three options but i got my main i was gonna say i I have i think four listed on mine who is who did you end up going with who is the least valuable player my least valuable player is amari cooper okay i that was definitely one of the options for sure because he was Ranked very high. He ranked top 10 wide receiver. And he much. just didn't do anything yeah. all year. He was top 10 wide receiver on everybody's draft board. And he had, what, one game? Until the very end of the season here. Very end, last two weeks. All of a sudden, he decided, I'm going to catch touchdowns. And the funny thing is, actually on the year, he had seven touchdowns. Which, that's not bad. No, not at all. But he only had 48 catches and 680 yards. So, he missed three games. That doesn't even, He was so bad before that. He yeah, I mean, he, did, he ended up... 31st as wide receiver and standard, but really, yeah. And take away that week seven against Kansas City where he went nuts. Yeah, exactly. He got 33 times. points. Other than that, he broke double digits three times, and two of them, I guarantee you didn't get to use because one was week 17, which, and, you know, most people are not playing. And week 16, more than likely, Amari Cooper's not playing on your had, team. He had three for 66, too. It was not like he had good volume. He just had three catches. So, yeah, he just was a. You know what? He's going to be a candidate for maybe like, we got our bounce back award. He's a candidate for that. People are going to look at him that way. Oh, yeah. So he's, I think he's going to have some hype next year. I really do. I don't think it's done. He's too young. It's going to be, he's not going to go late in drafts where you're going to be able to steal him. I don't feel like you're going to get him at value. Like you're not going to, he's not going to be like a seventh, eighth round pick. He's going to be up there just because. John Gruden's there now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, turn this around, he's right? a big name. He's a talented guy. I, I really don't know what happened to him this year. Well, Crabtree's going to be gone, so it's going to be Amari Cooper. You think officially? It, I mean, he's most like that was the. I guess with Gruden, Gruden could change things. It, that depends, but it sounds like he was going to be gone. Gotcha. So my pick ended up being Cooper. Was we'll get to our honorable mentions too in a minute, but Cooper was one of my options, but I went with Terrell Pryor. Oh, so, man, I actually, I totally forgot about yeah, him. because I mean, he totally which, forgot about him. I was going to say, which like, actually should, just he just wins. <laughs> like, he completely forgot about the guy. He was, by all account. I mean, we, I think, were actually, we just not, we were going to say we ranked him really, really, really low. We ranked him at like 20th range. And that was lower than, I think, almost every we, other We got people. some crap for that. Like, people went at us. I remember, like, one of the Instagram rankings we put out there, because that's where you get all the comments. People kind of went at us about that, thinking you guys are, you know, hating on probably disrespecting Terrell Pryor, <laughs> like the disrespect line. Like you're, we thought we were just ranking Terrell Pryor so low. We were just, you know, nowhere near. But he was being. I mean, I saw him tenth 
in the rankings. I saw him as high as, you know, top 10, but 20 catches, 240 yards, one touchdown. Oh, my God, so bad. It was. I mean, his first game started out good. I mean, good, decent. He was 6 for 66, so he's okay. He might do something. Never had more than three catches in a game after that. Only had one touchdown. Just, and then, now, then he got hurt and didn't play after week nine. But it didn't matter. He was on pace for, like, 40 t- catches, maybe. Just terrible. He won't be with the Redskins next year. Who knows where he's going to land. Maybe maybe he could do something next year, but he's going to be a... If he's drafted at all, it'll be the last pick in the draft, pretty much. Like, there's no confidence whatsoever in him. Just such a disappointment. And I, I don't know what it was. I really don't. <laughs> I don't either. I, you know, you see a lot of people go to Washington and, and not fit in. Yep. And it's just one of those, you know, difficult teams. So... I mean, we all know that he's talented. I, I, I guess I don't understand either. I don't know. You think on that team, too, it's not like they had an abundance of wide receivers. You know, yeah. Doxon came on a little bit late. They threw a ton to the running back. They, they needed playmakers, and they still couldn't get him the ball. I don't it get it. It should have been a good situation, and it just wasn't for some reason. Hard. I don't know. Don't know what happened, but he's my least valuable. So who are some of the honorable mention guys? <coughs> mm, pardon me. Uh, my next one that I thought was pretty high up there was Martavis Bryant. Okay, yeah. I actually didn't I didn't have him listed, but I didn't He was ranked he way higher than people are remembering. He was he was probably slightly he was around the Terrell Pryor range. Really. Yeah. And he I mean he really disappeared too. He did completely just um terrible. I mean he had the off field just distraction basically he became. He just never was much of anything. That's the thing. He just no. wasn't and it really was an injury. It was just he threw a little fit when he wasn't getting the ball, and then Juju Smith-Schuster just made the most of it and just stole his limelight. And realized Juju's a better all-around wide receiver than Martavis, and Martavis is just the deep threat. He wasn't even... Yeah. The thing is, him and Brothersberger, I don't think, were ever on the same page. So that if you're not on the same page with the quarterback, it's going to be a long season. Yeah, and he's another one. He's just super physically talented, and you're, you're hoping he was going to do well. Yeah, I'm not going to be... Very interested in him for, for a while. It's hard. To, it's hard to say. Maybe he could do something, but yeah, he has no. some talent. You know, the thing is, he's talented. But how many talented guys have there been that just can't put it together? And he might be one of them. He that, really might. Yeah, you know, there's been a ton of them. And is he going to be? You know, more than likely he's going to be on the Steelers. So you know, he's going to be the number three. And even if he's not on the Steelers, you know, ah, you don't know what kind of situation he's walking into. He could be, a, you know, another prior. No one's going to really, you know. No one. He's gonna have the cash for yeah, a guy. He's can't not gonna have on. a role. He's gonna be a third at best wherever he goes, and I don't even see that. So another guy I I thought about Demarco Murray. Oh, okay. So he was preseason eighth running back. <coughs> that's the thing. He's, he had some weeks, but overall, six hundred fifty nine yards, six touchdowns. He had thirty nine catches, did decent there, but he just wasn't, you know, very good. He ended up being the twenty third ranked back. So when you're ranked up in the top 10 and you only put 23 and that's with injuries to other people and stuff yeah. and he played all year and he still only gets to 23rd just just kind of a disappointment well i i do have to say you kind of saw that coming just because yeah, he, derrick henry finally they really you know, did split carries finally but completely yeah they were but, only um they're only eight carries apart in the year yeah and speaking of that my other guy that i was uh thinking about doing that was right up there with those two guys that i mentioned before was isaiah crowell yeah he's another one he was i think he he was in, he broke the top ten with a lot of different uh, rankings. Yeah, I pulled and, up um, the consensus before the season from Fantasy Pros. He was twelfth on the consensus, as high as seventh on rankings. Yeah. So man, he ended up thirtieth, and he played the entire season. I mean, and he only had two rushing touchdowns. Like we we didn't rank him terribly low, but we also we weren't like we were hesitant about Crowell. But I wouldn't say we just completely. We thought he'd be better than this. We, yeah, and I, I thought he would be for sure. And running back was thin, so you're like, oh, yep. he's a starting running back. He, you know, he should do well. But two touchdowns for a guy that got a lot of carries is just ridiculous. And you know, there's plenty of guys that that jumped above him. But there, I mean, a lot of these guys played after injuries or you know weeks later. The fact that Crowell played an entire season and still only managed yep. to be thirtieth. Oh. Another one that didn't make my list just because he wasn't really drafted high and no one expected him to be because of suspension was Doug Martin just because. Yeah. Was, he didn't he, he didn't do what he, we were hoping. He but. wasn't. He was suspended, so he wasn't drafted very high, so it's hard to say that. But he was, when he came back, he was still just terribly disappointing. Yeah. I expected something from the guy. 
and just got nothing. And I guess my other one, it's hard. This is a hard one to do because not his injury, but injury to his quarterback, Jordy Nelson. Yeah, I, I decided it, not it, to it, yeah, put just, him on there because of that. Really, it, he played the, the whole year, but it's hard to say what would have happened. He was good with Rodgers, so I think it's more of a Rodgers thing. It's still terribly disappointing yeah. when you get a guy who – that's the problem. You lost so many weeks – by keeping him in your lineup. That's it was it was worse like his situation was worse than him getting injured and out for the year. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just like Yeah, exactly. That's why I didn't I didn't put him on there. Yeah, it's um, just, that was a tough one. Just, I, I, there's actually a couple more. I, I feel bad putting so many people <laughs> on here, but I mean it's really easy to pick out, right? And another one you have to say is a Jai. Yeah. I still kind of believe in him. He could make another, you know, yep. he could get another Definitely. a bounce back or something like that. But he was Sixth. Um, yeah, he was terribly consensus. disappointing. He was the sixth ranker in preseason. He, he never so. got it going. And my last one was Gillisley. Yeah. A little lower, but at the same time, he got a lot of hype. And the fact that they just benched him for well, half the year. I mean, and it's not even necessarily maybe the hype early on, but the, the start to the oh, week I, one. And I, it, I don't want to keep saying this, but it's also why I can never, I will never draft Patriots running backs pretty much. I try to stay away from them like the plague. Uh, Gillisley, I'll be honest. Totally got him late round one of them, thinking that maybe he could be a TD vulture, which looked really good for two weeks. But you know, what I mean, like Deion Lewis ended up twelfth overall. Yep. Burkhead was was in there. Gillisley had a hot start. You just don't know who they're gonna play. And then this isn't a guy who's made my list. I just saw the name going through, but he was actually very big. Just Paul Perkins. Remember that guy? Oh man. <laughs> He just he was the funny thing is with him he was actually thought of as maybe a sleeper running back there that you could get for like your third guy and really break out and just we will never say the name Paul Perkins on this podcast again that's it I'm pretty sure I I feel pretty confident in saying that he's done like completely so no more Paul Perkins all right we got through those awards we have a couple more first off I'm gonna go we'll save the our best calls for last so here we go performance you don't believe in which is a player ranked highly this season that you don't think can repeat in 2018. Maybe he can repeat, but you just don't see it happening. All right, I'm going to get this out of the way first. I have two guys. One of them's not, one of them's way too easy, I almost feel like, because it's pretty clear it's probably not going to happen. Alex Smith. <laughs> he was my number one as well. He, you know, he's the number one, and he is. I think he's the clear cut number one to this thing because yeah. he's probably, he's not going to be the quarterback in Kansas City, I, it feels likely. I still think he's going to be a starting quarterback somewhere, though. So maybe he can. I don't know. It depends on the situation, where he goes. If he goes to Denver, maybe he could do something. I don't know. You don't know. I think he will be a starting quarterback, but I just don't expect anything from it. So Alex Smith would be my number one guy here. So you're number one as well. It's yep, just, yeah. I think that's pretty clear because, what, was he fourth in the league this year? Fourth, fifth, right there? Yeah. So actually, I'm going to go to my number two, which I think is could be more controversial. I don't know. Some people are going to agree. Some not. Mark Ingram. Ooh, yeah, I'm not going to agree. No, and a lot of people won't. Here it is. I like Mark Ingram, the player. I always have. I just feel, I, this is the thing again, I don't think. If Ingram and Kamara put together seasons like they did this year, next year, it'll be the first time in NFL history that has happened where two running backs from the same teams have played that well two years in a row. It has never happened. Never. That is my only, it's not that I hate the player. I just feel like it has never happened in the history of the NFL. I don't know if it will now. And if I had to choose between the two of them, I feel like it's going to be Kamara that's going to break out of that. Just because Ingram's 28 years old, you know, getting older, going to be 29 during the season next year. He's going to be in his eighth season in the NFL. A lot of, you know, a lot of wear and tear on him. Always trying to replace him, I feel like the Saints have been. So, I mean, this year they finally gave him some work. But that's it. It's pretty much, it's not the player. I've always kind of liked him. But... I just don't see that Ingram and Kamara can break that trend the NFL's had. I know the NFL's a little different now. Not, it's never happened before because there wasn't, you know, committees like there are now. But that's why I'm going. That's why Ingram's my pick there. I just can't see it repeating itself. And if one's going to fall off, it's going to be Ingram. So I know you don't quite agree with it. You think they can go another year? Yeah, I mean, I guess it depends on how much you think a fall off is, but. <laughs> Pardon me, but um, yeah, I think both of them can be very highly successful still. Yeah, you know, you know, will they both be in the top six like they are now? If that's what you're betting against, you know, probably not. But 
Um, I don't know. I, I feel like they're a good fit for one another. It's not like DeMarco Murray and Derrick Henry, right? Where they're true. kind of the same player. Yeah. That, that is, Alvin that Kamara is true. and them are very different players. So, and <clears throat> I, I think he, I think he still has a couple years in him, Ingram, because yeah. last year he did really, really well. And yeah, they do try to, I feel, it feels like they do kind of try to get rid of him, but at the same time, uh, they keep putting him in there cause he's very successful. And, um, and nowadays more people are kind of going towards the multiple running back kind of approach in order to kind of make sure that they always have a healthy guy back there. Yep. Um, I don't know. I, I, I think, I think they definitely have one more year, but I, I'm with you. I mean, if you're going to take one, I would definitely take him on. Yeah, that's pretty much my thought on that. So who, who do you got here? The guy, and I, <clears throat> Very impressed with him, but for some reason, I just don't think Robbie Anderson is the answer in New York. And he was 17th as a as a wide receiver. I don't know if McCown is coming back, but if he's not there, they're still not. They're gonna have a younger or worse quarterback. And I think Robbie Anderson is he'll be the number two. I just think everything's stacking up against him almost. Uh, so yeah, I would say Robbie Anderson. I don't feel good about it because I want to root for the guy, but um, I I think he was. This was his year in the top 20, and I don't think he'll be it's anywhere funny, I look at those ranks. I look at every single player ahead of him in the wide receiver ranks, and I think every single one of them should be okay. So I think that's pretty yeah. good. You know what I mean? I'm looking at him. I think I don't see one guy and be like, oh, yeah, definitely. That guy's not going to be good next year. I don't see that. No. I mean, I, I see I see a few that I'm like, okay, they'll move down a bit. But that's about, like, Larry Fitzgerald. It, at it some point, you know, Palmer's age. done. That's and, almost too easy. <laughs> yeah, so I didn't want to say him because it's like, yeah, whatever. He but might. he was in the top ten again. Maybe like, he falls off. Maybe he doesn't. Yeah. We've, we've been expecting him to fall off for five years. So, and, I mean, running back-wise, a lot of the guys I like, again, it's not like there's a sure – I mean – you could give the easy oh, McCoy. Yeah, like that's about it. I was like, saying like that's about the only guy. Just and right. it's only he's aging, thing, which you don't know what's going to happen to Hyde really. And yeah, Sam but, Fran maybe, but he was you know he's eleventh. Deion Lewis because he's on the Patriots. Like well, I'm, you know, you're kind of Deion pulling Lewis it. Going to be better next year. I think you think so? Get more work. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. See, it's. I think those are good. I think that's pretty much a good option there. I, I think that's where I'd go. All right. Disappointing player most likely to bounce back in 2018. I got a couple options for this as well, but I got one. Let's see. One that I'm going to go with. Okay. My main option, I decide, I actually, I didn't decide until right now, Mike Evans. Yep. It's just, he was terribly disappointing. I don't even know. He finished behind Robbie Anderson. I do know that. Yeah. What did he finish? 20th? He finished, um, yeah, 20th. Exactly. I think he's too good. He's, yeah. he's young. He's like 24 years old. He's, he's, not even, maybe 23. He's good. And I think of if you get a full year healthy Winston, maybe they can just turn things around. I don't know. I There's too much talent. Yeah, there. and you saw him actually do pretty well in the first half of the <clears throat> season. Yeah. And then he got that stupid penalty. He got suspended. Then he lost Winston. And that middle of the year was just lost to him. Yep. Um, and it's kind of funny because my number one bounce back player actually is the tandem with that is Jameis Winston. Okay, yeah. And I try not to go with – Injury, but let's be honest, even before that, he was really struggling. And then finally, maybe it was he was just injured all year because when he came back in, he was putting up points and he started looking like the guy that you wanted to play. So um, I think he being 20th QB at, you know, being as good as he is, you know, that's that can't happen. So I, I think he is going to bounce back. I think he'll be a top 10 guy next year. And he was 11th in targets this year. And I think if he keeps getting targets, he'll be up there. I, I, Expect a good season from him. Didn't want to go with Dez there. You did not expect him to bounce back from Dez. He was worse off than Evan <coughs> this past year. He's what twenty fifth. Yeah, yeah 25th. we'll we'll probably end up talking about him. <laughs> He's a, uh, interesting. My other guy who I didn't go with, who I do think is going to have a good year next year, is JJ. Yeah, I, I figured that you were going to have yeah. him. It, if he, it's obviously if he's the guy in Philadelphia, which I think he will be. If he's the main back in that offense with Carson Wentz, which actually will. I don't know when Carson Wentz will be back next year either. He might not be ready week one. I mean, I highly doubt he's ready week one. I mean, when you have an ACL injury that late in the season, that's kind of pushing it, I think. Nine months, basically, to get back to week one. So, either way, I think Ajay is going to be a good bounce back guy. Did you have any others on the list? That's all I had. I had Evans and Ajay. It's only two yeah, hours. Yeah, <clears throat> no one that I feel really good about. Yeah. No, yeah, I mean, you could, you could throw. Guys, I mean, but. yeah, I mean, really, I mean, I feel like this is a cheap one, but you have to say T.Y. Hilton, just assuming True. that luck yeah. is coming back. Yeah. Obviously, he was 24th overall uh, in the wide receiver category. But once again, I'm, I'm trying not to do it where 
something affected him so much. And like a, a Jordy doesn't fit for me for this because I just worry about his age. I don't know. If, I don't know. If I don't know if he will bounce back or not. Yeah, I don't. I don't know, and I can't. I can't know until Rogers is there. Yeah, and so. not to mention, it really did kind of weird me out. I mean, I this was kind of a good one for my for my call. Thinking I, I was still high in Devontae Adams. He ended twelfth, which is relatively around where I had him. I think I had him a little bit lower. It's, yeah, you, yeah, but you, at the same time, it. It's strange that Devontae Adams could still produce when Jordy yeah. Nelson couldn't, and I find that to be the most alarming thing. Yeah, he had a perfectly good season, and why couldn't Jordy? It's just strange. I just feel like that age could be creeping up. It doesn't always with wide receivers as much, but 33, yeah, you can start to get there. All right, last two categories here. Our best call and worst call. Start with oh, worst. Boy. We'll end on a good note, so let's start. All right. Worst call of the year. All right, might as well get mine out of the way. All right. Uh, first, I have to I have to go with the people I actually went after because there's yep. a few that I can go. I'll go into after this who I was go, I stayed away from. Yep. And it's better, you know, what I mean, like you aim small, miss small. So it's, those are yep. I, I those aren't as bad as the ones I went for. And the ones I went for, I had Dez on there, twenty fifth. And the the weird thing about that, he had every opportunity. Um, yep. You know, Elliot getting suspended, he should have been a larger part of it. He dropped significantly in TDs. Pretty much a lot of things that other people were saying about it that I wasn't believing. I had him on my team. You know, it bit me a bit. So, Dez is definitely my worst call. Mine is going to be Sammy Watkins. Yeah, I could have called that one. <laughs> Just didn't do it. I mean, maybe I can say, oh, he was traded. That's why. But, eh, it's hard to say. You know, he, it's not like he wasn't in a good offense. Yeah, he's no. in a good offense. I mean, Robert Woods did well yeah, there. He did great. Robert Woods came from the same team Sammy Watkins came from this past season. Yes, I know Sammy didn't get got traded in the preseason, but if you're supposed to be as talented as Sammy Watkins was supposed to be, you're. So, I really feel like you can catch on, you're, especially at wide receiver. And he played pretty much the entire season, I think. Yeah, I don't it, know if he missed week five or not, but... Other than I don't that, think he missed week five. I think that just yeah, it's just <laughs> so he might have he might have just not played week seventeen. But he, I mean, you started thinking that, and no, it's even weirder. He, he was thirty third overall, yeah. and guess how many touchdowns he had? What did he have here first? Eight touchdowns. Is that right? Eight touchdowns, and he was thirty third. That's why it's because of the touchdowns. It's the only reason he even became anywhere near the top. 60. Exactly. If, if you have 80 or eight touchdowns yeah. and you're as talented as Sammy Watkins in an offense that was torching people, yep. how in the world are you that low? Week three, man. I thought that was like the coming out party. <laughs> right. I'm like, oh, wow. Sammy Watkins is going to do this. And then he had two catches the next three weeks. <laughs> yeah. He just, I mean, he didn't get it done. Guess what? I'm going to be hyping Sammy Watkins next season. Yeah. I, you know, I, honestly, I, if he comes back to the Rams. I do feel okay. I feel decent about it. I yeah, think I, I don't feel bad there. this this next time around because I think the the key is I've seen enough out of Goff now, where I think they can make that jump. Because yeah. let's be honest, that's why Gurley was so good as well. They just gave him the ball a ton and said, "Our beat our defense." Yep. They didn't make Goff do too much. I think this next one they're gonna you know take off the reins a little bit. It might hurt Goff a little bit, a little free more interceptions or something, but I think Woods and Watkins will both benefit next year. Yeah, if Watkins can actually turn into something, that's going to be an offense. Watkins and Woods cup with Gurley at running back, God, that's going to be something to watch for yeah. years. <clears throat> a little scary. Really will. And be. with that defense, too. Yeah, so Sammy, my worst call. I mean, that's my only bad call there, right? No. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, that's, that's, I don't think there's one. That's by far the worst one. Just didn't happen. But it's, again, it's not like I I still – he was not even top 15 for me. But I did hype him quite a bit. I really thought there's going to be something there. Yeah. It just didn't happen. I really don't feel as bad because my other one was Evans. But let's be honest, oh, like, yeah. okay, Dez, he was <clears throat> just outside of the top 10 probably for most people. Evans was up there for most people. So I don't feel nec- – and Cooper is another bad call by me. I don't necessarily feel that bad because I didn't really get these guys a whole lot. I got Dez in like one league. Because they were yep. so high up there anyway yep. that I didn't reach to get them. The one, there is a few that I said to stay away from that I totally botched. Yep. But once again, like I said, it's much better to do that. But I do have to say, like, Russell Wilson, he was so far ahead of every other quarterback, and I was so against him. 
So I do have to call myself out on that one. I was way off. Craig was right on that one, actually. <laughs> um, that one hurts. But at the same time, I wasn't wrong because I waited, didn't overpay. Kirk Cousins, I said he was going to be fifth. He tied for sixth. And Philip Rivers, I said, was a great late round guy, and he ended up eighth. Yeah, so true. not bad. And some of these guys that were above him, Alex Smith, Carson Wentz, you know, not too many people had those guys above him. So, so I'm going to go best call of the year, and that's going to be Russell Wilson, just like you said. Yeah, that's a good one. I, I mean, I was I had a good feeling about Russell Wilson, mainly because of his second half of 2016. He was really good for the last half of the year. I think he got healthy, and he was pretty good this year, except for the very end of the year. He really wasn't. The end of the year, he kind of disappointed. So if you if he got you to the, the playoffs, he kind of probably didn't win many playoffs for you. Because he would have done well in week 14, but the championships in week 15, 16, people have. I don't think he did it. He probably didn't do enough to win you a title, which is disappointing. But he's still number one overall on the season. And you didn't draft him number one overall. So he was my, I'd say that's my best call is Russell Wilson. Just really being on the Russell Wilson bandwagon this year. So went with Russell. Who was your best call? Yeah, pay dividends. Uh, My best call, I would, I had some good ones, but the one that I really have to put my hat on. Um, was Keenan Allen. Yeah. Wide receiver, he was third, only behind DeAndre Hopkins and Antonio Brown. I had him in the top ten. Everyone called me an idiot, and what up. So, <laughs> you know, that one feels good, but at the same time, I, you know, I don't I don't think that one was that crazy to call. I, you know, he even outplayed what I thought he was going to do. Third overall is pretty crazy, but for as good as he was, I wish there was a little more consistency. He really came on in the second half of the season, so he, he helped a lot of people in the playoffs, which is really cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so Keenan Allen for me. And one, the other one, I'm not gonna, not my top one, but I, I do like my Zach Ertz call. I was I hyped Zach Ertz a lot in the preseason, so happy to see him do well. I mean, there was one we had throughout the season. Like I think we were, we at least brought Alvin Kamara's name up every single week in the waiver wire before yeah. he took off. So I and. I, the only reason I didn't call that as like my best call of the year because I had him on teams, yeah, was because you know at the if I'm being honest, he was third on the depth chart. Yeah. We just really liked him and we're saying, I mean, I, I was pulling stuff on my butt and I was saying, oh, they should trade AP, and then they yeah. traded AP. It's kind of like I don't have any control over that, so I did, I can't call that one completely. It's kind of like someone calling like Hunt or someone. Before, you know, what I mean, if you <laughs> yeah, draft exactly. him bef- before we someone did, else got hurt, we liked the talent, and it finally was able to show through. I and mean, we didn't expect that. Like, there's no way we expected what he did. No, like, no, <laughs> I didn't expect that even slightly. But yeah, better be lucky than good sometimes. But yep. that's why that's why I like the Keenan Allen or even uh, Marvin Jones was another good one True. for me. You stayed on the Marvin Jones bad. Yeah, he, really he ended fifth, off. which is actually mind blowing to me because it didn't feel like he was quite that good all year. But I mean, he killed it. Yeah, and then I don't know anyone else that you have that really stands out. Not up? really. I mean, really, it was there were some decent ones. I mean, at times in the year, it just depended on like our I like always look at our, our deep sleeper list, like putting um, players like Orleans Darkwa on it and Buck Allen on it, who actually did something. Like that's the thing. If you have a guy from that list who does something, it's pretty solid. And then uh, this just the regular sleeper list. I had Rex Burkhead. So yeah, I had uh, did pretty well on that. Hogan. I really wish he didn't get hurt. That's true, <clears throat> but he was doing pretty well before that injury. So there's some we some decent ones. You know, not I mean some good, some bad. I think majority weekly probably did pretty decent. You know, I don't know. We both made the playoffs in our league, so we did something right. I really wish I would have been more. You know, going after Todd Gurley though. That's the one I really wish I would have been like on, but. We didn't expect the Rams to be what the Rams are. No, and he, it, was he so was, it wasn't like he went outside the top 10 running backs or something like that. It's not that you had a huge window to get him. True. Yeah, I mean, it just, he couldn't, ex- he wasn't good last year. It wasn't necessarily him. It was just that offense was so bad, and I didn't think they were going to be this much approved. So, you know what's crazy is Nelson Aguilar finished ahead of Des Bryant this year. How do you feel about that? I know. Uh, he was, okay, he's the one that I really, I don't think I ever gave any love to him pretty much through the entire year, and the guy just kept producing. Uh, yeah, he was he was a really just, funny one to watch. Yeah, it's just crazy. Some of these, we'll go through this whole list one of these one of these weeks and just kind of find out the crazy positions that people ended up who, in. Just nuts. Who, who are a couple of guys that really came on at the end that you're excited about next year? I don't know. <laughs> I don't really have many. I mean, um, let me see, see here. I'm just trying to look through the list here and see who I was thinking of. I mean, it's been, I've turned my mind off already. 
<laughs> for like some of these players. Actually, Deion Lewis. That is the one. Deion Lewis. Because I feel like he really established himself there as the back. To we, we talk about Lewis a lot there. Like, hey, he's getting the carries. They're consistent. They're consistent. And towards the end of the year, I feel like it just really ramped up. And he actually did a little bit more just overall rushing. Just really. They gave him the, let's say against Buffalo weeks you've seen. They actually gave him the ball 24 times. First time he's had over 20 carries. He gets 129 yards out of it. And he backs it the next week. He gets 26. He didn't do I mean amazing. He got 93 out of it, though. Those were two huge fantasy weeks. I mean, I think Lewis and Burkhead next year as a little tandem are going to be really good together. Like, that's going to be a good one. Again, but as a guy, I think Lewis, you can probably, you know, I'm going to have to go too crazy to get him yet, I feel like, because Burkhead's there, because it's still the Patriots. But I was impressed overall of how, like, he actually looked. And... I think Derrick Henry is probably that's one that everyone's going to yeah. be next year. It's it's already too he's already going to be too hyped. Yeah, the writing's on the wall on that one it's, though. That <laughs> one's just going to be crazy. I feel like it's just going to be just nuts. And then Kenyon Drake. I think Kenyon Drake has established himself with Miami, and I think he is going to end up being probably a pretty decent running back too next year. Yeah, and he's he's going to be one that jumps just skyrockets up the board. Yeah, and I. I I always like, oh, he's, he maybe we can get him. Not, not to, he's not going to be too crazy up there, but he, yeah, he's going to be. It, you can't sneak anybody by now. So he's going to be one. I'm kind of interested in You know who I came around on? I think it's going to be probably pretty decent next year is Cooper Cup. I I haven't been on a Cooper Cup. I haven't been a big fan of his. But I think he got more consistent. And then I just have a feeling a year or two is going to be even a little bit better. Yeah, I, I don't. I mean, not like he, huge on him, but yeah, I just think yeah. he's gonna be a little bit. I think be, he was uh, for a rookie season. He did phenomenal. He did twenty seventh overall, and I just yeah. But I, I, I'm finally coming around on him a little. I bit. I don't more. know if I'm gonna jump him up too much more. I, I think no, he'll no, be a I top, maybe a twenty fifth guy. You get him a third receiver. I think that's where you want him. Yeah, I, I just don't. I don't see where. I think being in the slot for a young quarterback, I think his opportunities, and like I had said earlier, it goes with it. I think Woods and Watkins will get more opportunity. Um. So I think his his position is kind of what it's going to be for the next couple of years. But who knows? Maybe maybe they'll switch things around a little more. Maybe mm-hmm. they'll continue throwing that kind of offense, seeing how well they did. So maybe. But, yeah, he, he definitely outperformed everything I thought he was going to. And then Eric Ebron did just enough towards the end of that year to make us have to talk about him next year again. <laughs> I don't know about him. He's still young, though. He still is. And he actually, the last, it's not great, but. He finally showed some signs towards the end of the year that, hey, maybe he can play. So it all depends on what goes on in Detroit and what their offense looks like next year and how well, you know, all the changes. But he could be interesting. And then, I mean, <laughs> we don't have to talk about it because everyone's going to be, and he's going to be overhyped already. It's Jimmy Garoppolo. It's going to be, he was great. So you say, oh, yeah, he did great at the end of the year. He's going he's gonna to be so overhyped. Oh, yeah. Like I'm already, I'm already just off the bandwagon because he's going to be too overhyped. Like, it's going to be nuts. Actually, might as well talk a little bit. We're only doing one episode this week. Deshaun Watson, do you think he's going to be overhyped? Overrated? <coughs> yeah, without a doubt. Right? Like, it's it's already well, pretty clear. I, well, I don't want to say that. Um, I, like, he's going to be good, but it's going to be... T- yeah, so, I mean, how overrated? I, I think people... There will always be one guy in your league that is going to go crazy for this guy. Looking at it, you do have Hopkins. I mean, there's not a whole lot not to like about the guy. <laughs> I mean, he yeah, put up be good, crazy but... points. He was number one for, uh, you know... A few weeks there when he really hit his stride. Well, actually, I'm a, this, <laughs> might as well just do this real quick. Quarterbacks, that's the position I'm really interested in, how this is going to rank out. So, I've seen so many preseason rankings. All right, people are already making their ranks for next year. I'm not, we're going to wait for that. It's, who knows. But who would be your number one quarterback? Is it Rodgers? Um... Yeah, yeah, right, mine would okay. be Rodgers still. I, I had to really think about that one, though, because Russell did so well this year. Okay, and Russell Wilson's not the guy who's passing him in these rankings. What, who is it, Brady? Carson Wentz. Oh. Are people forgetting the guy's hurt? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Even if he, healthy. If he wasn't hurt, then... I'm not I, putting I, him in one, though. Yeah, yeah I'll, be, I'll be honest. The way he played, though, was pretty freaking amazing. Yeah, I mean, he's just, I'm still going Rodgers for sure. I don't even hesitate. I'm going Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, there. I mean, I am too. But at the same time, I totally understand where Carson Wentz is, could be up there. But yep. because of his injury, he'll be a top, he'll probably be top, I don't know. He. I mean, how how high would you put him? I mean, he's going to, 
He's got to be top five, right? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. So yeah. what do you think, like third? Like Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson, him? Or would you still put Tom Brady above him? I think third is the lowest he's going to be. And I think I put him over Russell. I actually put him, I put him too. Crazy, I didn't talk myself into it. <laughs> Which is, I don't want him there. But I don't want him there. It, it's just going to be a hard rank. It's going to be Rodgers, Wentz, Brady, Wilson. Watson's going to get up there. Watson, luck will be back. Luck, oh man, it's going to be, quarterback is, you know what? It's you know been what that loaded. Means? You know what that means? Waiting. Wait on quarterback. Yep. <laughs> every year, every year. <laughs> All right. I think it's going to do it for this week. I don't know what I plan for next week, Jeff. I have a schedule made up. I'm going to pull this up while we're talking here because if you're still listening, hey, you probably don't mind to hear a little bit more. I made up a schedule here to say what we're going to do for the rest of the season. So next week, I'm going to bring up, let's see. Do, 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 do. I don't even know yet. We'll come up with something. I can't find the list. We'll make up an episode for next week. Maybe we'll talk about how the playoffs are going. I kind of skipped it this week, but then we got after that we got some fall. We'll do like a fall off player list, breakout player list, bounce back player list, players to avoid, all that kind of stuff coming up. So we will do all of that, you know, starting in the next few weeks, starting to get in two thousand eight a little bit. But I know people are putting rankings up, but we're gonna wait at least until I think we're gonna do that like right at the like maybe the end of February, beginning of March, right before like free agents start hitting, just to get an idea. Because that's, season's still going. I don't want to see 2018 ranks yet. It's too early. Who knows what's going to happen. So, I think that's it. Talk to you guys next week.